Hello, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is December 31st of 2019. It is uh, about 5.45 p.m. here in Fort Worth. And in about 6 hours and 15 minutes, it is going to be uh, January 1st of 2020. Uh, this is probably going to be my last video of 2019. I started doing videos when well, I was doing videos before, but so far as YouTube's concerned, I think YouTube started in 2005, and I was doing videos in 2005 on YouTube. I was also doing videos before there was a YouTube. But uh, this is going to be my, well, maybe my last video of 2019. I was thinking that maybe what I might do, and I'm not sure, is uh, before midnight tonight, I might just start live streaming. Okay. I think that is... Yes, it is. I thought I... I thought I shut that off. Amazon Photos. I go down here. I thought I had gone in and, and turned off announcements on this, and it does it about. See, Amazon Photos. I, you know, I use Amazon Photos, and I use Google Photos too. I, I think I may just do away, you know, just uh, see if I can find Amazon Photos here. This is it. It says completed. Uh, okay, it says it's completed already. That's aggravating. I thought yesterday that I had uh, gone someplace and turned off no announcements about it. So, where were we? Oh, anyway, I was. I, I just may go tonight, just before midnight, start live streaming on YouTube and stream over into 2020. I, I may not. I may be taking a nap. Will not be partying. Will, you know, will not be drinking. I don't drink any alcoholic beverages at all. Uh, I don't really party. I never mind a party. I'm a dull man. I'm a dull person. That's Coke Zero, by the way. It's supposed to be sugar free. I'm a type 2 diabetic. I, uh, I never really thought I was going to be a diabetic. Oh, I should have known because I was getting medical reports for the last few years, and the doctor would say, your lab work, you know, your blood sugar is just, you're almost, you're almost in the... He seemed really excited waiting for me to, to become a diabetic. Uh, anyway... Uh, let me wish you all a, a happy 2020 coming up. I hope 2020 is a better year for all of us, uh, for everybody. Uh, I used to make, I, I, I actually used to really like New Year's because it was like a fresh start and I would make sort of resolutions you know things that I was things I was going to change that I was going to be different that uh, I wasn't going to sin anymore or that I was going to lose weight or exercise or I used to and I, I liked making these things and Sometimes, like, oh, back in the, I think the 80s or whatever, and I was working at a hospital, and I was eating, I don't know how many, five, six, seven candy bars during an eight-hour shift. I'd make my rounds and pass a candy machine and get a candy bar and eat that or whatever. And uh, I think it was back in the 70s, actually. And I thought, this is not good, not good at all. And uh, so I made a resolution that I was going to give up not not just candy bars, 
chocolate cookies, cake, everything. And so when, and I couldn't like, but on Jan something about, you know, okay, January 1st. January 1st, okay, no candy bars. No candy bars, you know, no cookies, no candy, no cake. And I think I did it for like a month, maybe longer. And I was uh, going through the hospital and, you know, doing patrols and, and uh, the nurses at the nurse, hey, Jim. We made these cookies. We got these cookies or whatever. And I, oh, okay. Thank you. Went down the hall and then it was like, oh shit. And I thought, well, I had a couple cookies and then I just went to the vending machine, got me myself a candy bar, and was back in the same, the same pattern. Now I know, you, you, but I, that's just the way. Sort of, I was, uh, you know. A Catholic born, you know, baptized, confirmed, went to Catholic grade school, Catholic high school. I was an altar boy or whatever, you know, and of course, kids, I mean, especially back then, we didn't know anything. We didn't have access to the Internet, you know. Uh, uh, so, you know, I would go to confession and... Uh, I gotta tell him something, you know. Bless me, Father, or bless me, Father, or let's see, what is it? it let's see, bless me, Father, for I've sinned. It's been uh, a month since my last confession. Then I've got to come. Now I'm not gonna tell him some real shit, you know. Not that I did. Not that I stabbed my family or killed dogs or cats or anything like that. But I'm not gonna tell him, you know. So. Uh, I had some impure thoughts. Um, uh, I I was disrespectful to my parents, um, you know, enough to. But when then when you know, you know, the father would absolve me of my sins and say say three Hail Marys and three Our Fathers and make a good act of contrition. I. And not just me, I think all, you know, I left and, okay, my sins, of, even though I know I kind of cheated, you know. Uh, okay, and I felt wonderful. And I think that's the way that Protestant, but they, I think that only hits them maybe, you know, they don't have confession. So I think maybe when they're born again, when they're, when they have that event, that's probably the way they feel. Oh, my God. Oh. Everything, you know, so, so I would come out of uh, the confessional and uh, kneel down, say my three Hail Marys and my three Our Fathers and make an act of contrition or whatever and then go out and so then for a day or two, not very long, I felt wonderful. Everything is wonderful. And then I would do something that was not really a sin at all, but everybody thought it was a sin. And then it was like, okay, okay, I'm a piece of shit. Okay, I feel rotten. Oh, well, you know. So, but anyway be great if we could all just experience that wonderful feeling all the time. be great if we'd have a great year, if things could be a lot different in the world, if our system of government actually worked, uh, if people weren't trying to, you know, everybody trying to screw everybody else. Uh, too bad we can't fix problems. Just think of all the years, like the Republicans, when, o when Obama became president, as soon as he was elected, they announced, we're not going to cooperate with the president in any way at all. We're not going to do anything that he wants. We're going to do everything in our world to sabotage him and to make sure he doesn't accomplish anything as president of the United States. 
and we want to make sure that he is not reelected. And he got, of course, reelected, and then they came out on the steps of the Republicans of the, you know, Congress and said, okay, you know, he, we're going to make sure he's a failure. Going to make so it was eight. Yeah, that was eight years. And it would what you know be so great if we could actually work together in some way to accomplish something with the other side. But a long time ago, it became because I remember when I was working, I was working at a small hospital. Right, you know, and everybody working there was. It was a small hospital. Well, it was connected. It was part of the major, you know, corporation that owned eight. Ended up owning eight, 18 hospitals, but it was a small hospital, and it was a small community hospital. And uh, we were all like neighbors. You know, we all knew each other. We knew, you know, we worked together. A small hospital, and we all worked together. We all liked each other, and you know. But I was the only liberal. That was the only Democrat. Well, I'm sure there were some others, but the ones that, you know, especially the emergency room people, the lab tech, the radiology person, the, you know, the ER nurses and all that type of stuff, they were all uh, Republicans and conservative, and I was liberal, and I'm very liberal. So, but we didn't hate each other or anything like, you know. Uh, I think I drove them crazy sometimes. In fact, they would wait for me. You know, I came on at 10 o'clock at night, and I can remember a different event. You know, I came to they, we didn't have security security around the clock at that hospital, which is that's terrible. I mean, if you, I'd actually a long time ago ended. Up, I was working full time hospital security, but I worked part time contract security, and one place that I worked, which was uh, they didn't have security around the clock. It was a home for retarded. I can't. I guess I can't say retarded kids. I, I'm going to say retarded kids. It was a, a place for retarded kids, and they didn't. They had security at night. In fact, you're not going to believe this. But the staff left. The staff left at I don't know ten o'clock, eleven o'clock, or whatever. And all there were were a couple of two, you know, secure, two security officers at this place. I don't know how many, 30, 40 kids there of different ages. Oh, I was a crazy. I think I might have told part of this story before. But anyway, but so I remember the one day, you know, when we came into, well, not day, but, you know, afternoon or evening when we came in to work, go to work. Uh, the hospital or the uh, uh, facility was a mess. The kids had gotten hold of the keys that security, you know, because security left the keys. Uh, and then uh, when you came on at night, you were supposed to get the keys. Well, when we came in that night, the kids had got the keys and they had unlocked everything that should be locked and they had locked everything that shouldn't be locked and the staff and everybody <laughs> people it was a disaster but at that sort of an event and others maybe say I, n I would never want to work security at any place that doesn't have security around the clock but I ended up working at this small hospital where they didn't have security during the uh, daytime so I would come in and they Staff would be waiting for me, and what about this? And what about this? What about the Rodney King rioting? And what about this? And what about Dukakis is a card-carrying member of the ACLU and all that stuff, man. But we we didn't not talk, and we liked each other, uh, you know. But but I don't bet now what it went. Uh, so it would be great if in 20, that's not going to happen, in 2020 if we could get back to the good old days. And actually, there, there really weren't any good old, you know. I'm a old white male. If I say, oh, the, you know, the uh, 
we ought to go back to the good old days. Well, the good old days, uh, blacks couldn't eat in, you know, uh, in restaurants. Uh, blacks had to have separate water fountains and separate restrooms and, you know, <laughs> those were not the good old days. Really not even the good old days for us, you know, as white people. Uh, but, so it, I don't know how we can cure, well, we need to take money out of government. And it's Democrats and Republicans should work together to do that, and that's one of the things we can do. And also some changes to our laws. In the past, a long time ago, I was like, don't mess with the Constitution. Don't make any change. Well, we need to make changes to it now. Uh, you know, cor corporations and and uh, businesses are, you know, they're not citizens. They're not human. They, sh they shouldn't have the right, you know. If somebody is a corporation or if somebody is rich, uh, they should not be able to spend unlimited amounts of money. That's what's caused part of this problem. <clears throat> for the Democrats, but especially for the Republicans, uh, because if somebody has, you know, millions or billions of dollars, uh, they can just uh, pick somebody like the, maybe, maybe let's say the governor of Texas. And, okay, I've got millions or billions of dollars, and I'm going to back you. You don't have any support real support from anybody else, but you got support from me, so you can be up, you know, you can uh, run for president, you can be uh, on the debates and everything else because I am the one who's financing you, you know, and there's other people up there that be the same, same thing, you know, uh, people who should not be a, a candidate for president or dog catcher or anything else, but they can be there because there's that money behind them. We need, uh, need to fix, you know, those kinds of problems. But anyway, that's not what I wanted to talk about. But anyway, I just hope that we all have a, a better 2020, and I hope the United States of America has a, a better 2020. But the reason I wanted to is uh, President Trump has signed into law a robocall bill into law. And this is something I've been screaming about. And you may have seen some videos for I don't know how far back with me. Because, you know, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm a liberal. I'm opposed to the death penalty for a number of reasons. I know that a lot of people in the United States, I don't know how many, uh, they they like the death, especially when I was working at that hospital where I was a liberal, and the other people were, a lot of them, were well, the, all the rest were Republicans, and a whole large number of those people were born-again Christian, you know, didn't, Halloween was a satanic thing. It was terrible. Uh, and just every, you know, but they love the death penalty. Oh, they love the death penalty. And, you know, I just kind of, just kind of blew my mind that that's just the way, you know, just the way it was. But, um, anyway, I, well, I'm a, that's what I wanted to say. I'm opposed to the death penalty. But you know what? People who make these robocalls, let's, let's, let's use the death penalty. Let us execute these people. And a good time, and I've mentioned something like this before, was be, you know, when the United States, when the stock market in New York City at the end of the day, they ring the bell. You know, if you're a a uh, TV channel or station that covers finances or whatever, 
it'll be like in four or five o'clock in the afternoon or whatever. Okay, now we're switching to the New York Stock Exchange for the closing bell. The number of, you know, the uh, the uh, index, you know, Dow Jones index is whatever it is. And here's the closing bell. And up there on this platform, which looks like a scaffold for hanging, you know, and up there will be uh, people. Now, sometimes it's like astronauts that walked on the moon right after that, or it'll be a military hero or a police officer that saved a baby or whatever. But they also have like, you know, uh, billionaires and whatever, and somebody that just whatever. But I think this would be an excellent time. They, we keep off the astronauts and the heroes and the, you know, first responders. And all. Don't put those up there. Put the people, people like this, the people that do the robocalls. Let's put them up there, and then you can switch there and then have a noose around their neck. And then when the closing bell, just snap their necks. Because I hate them. Uh, part of it is I'm not never have been much of a telephone user. Now computer, you know modem. I, my first modem was before the World Wide Web. You know 300 baud and that type of stuff. I had starting in 1982. I had my bulletin board system, but I had a modem before you know before that. But telephones, I don't. I've never been a big fan of them. When I was a kid, of course, we had the party line. Didn't really matter much to me, but, you know, so it was more than one. You know, I had to, if you wanted to make a call, you had to pick it up, make sure nobody else was using the, the line. And then sometimes when you were talking or whatever, which I didn't talk, you know, but you'd hear a little click, click. Somebody was either listening on the party line or somebody wanted to make a call. But I'm never a fan of, telephones oh computers oh yeah i'm a fan you know not much of a fan even with a cell phone i mean i do a few things with it but and i, I don't want to watch a movie on the cell phone i don't want to talk to people on this unless it's a necessity you know unless i have to call the pharmacy and see if my prescription's ready or something you know but i'm not but uh there also I have some hearing loss which makes it I've had it since I was a kid I've mentioned this repeatedly because it's a deciding factor in a lot of things um, it's just like even I use echo actually I have it set for the a word in this room and I use that you know like uh, what time is it? I'll be, I can lay in bed and ask what time it is. What the wet? Let's see. Uh, Alexa, what's the weather forecast? Right now in Fort Worth, it's 52 degrees Fahrenheit with mostly clear skies. Tonight's forecast has clouds with a low of 39 degrees. So even with echo, Even with echo, sometimes when the time is given or something like that, I can't quite have to ask it a second time to hear because of, you know, I have this, it's, I don't want to go in, I've gone into that in great detail in more than one video here, so I'm not going to go into that. So I'm just not a fan of getting phone calls, you know, or whatever. And so I hate robocalls. And I, I have, I've received um, I have received some, I've received the uh, well, I haven't had a car in I haven't owned a car in 10 years or more. I don't know. And I get calls every day. Uh, 
your uh, auto warranty has is expiring and you want you make sure you want to renew your you know and then it'll be uh, for auto insurance you know this is an opportunity you know for and I get those calls um, I received a call that a lot of people have received. I'm in the United States of America, of course. We have Social Security. I've received a call that I'm old, but I'm not senile yet, uh, but would be really disturbing to a lot of elderly people or whatever, a call saying uh, your Social Security uh, card is, uh, this is the Social Security Administration, and your card is being re revoked. Uh, press what I don't know what you know. Press whatever to talk to. Uh, so it's not Social Security. You know, it's not Social Security. But you can imagine some. I'm uh, 78, I believe. Yeah. You can imagine the trauma. Some you know. My mother had uh, Alzheimer's. Uh, Then I've also had the see the Social Security. Then I had the call also that a lot of people will get, have uh, received. You can do a search, I think, on YouTube, and you'll find, <laughs> you know, the one that's well. You you can do a search on YouTube, and you'll find people dealing with these. Call, you know, they'll you can hear them, and some of these people will deal with the people. And I think what, you know one is one of the calls was. This is the uh, Internal Revenue Service. Uh, informing you that you have a, a past due amount that you have to pay and uh, we uh, a warrant has been issued for your arrest and will be served on you today or tomorrow and you will be going to prison uh, if you want to uh, fix this matter you know I don't know hit seven or whatever I received that call and like I said if I or if you when you if you know of a good call the one, you know, dealing with these various things. I put the link below in the thing, and then I'll move it up into the, if it, I'll check it out, and, and uh, you know, not a call going to those people so they can try to scam somebody, but uh, a YouTube video where somebody explains the thing and then screws with those people, you know. I think one was, uh, well, there's more than one, I think, where somebody, you know, where that robo thing is calling, and the and the thing is, you know, a warrant has been issued for your arrest, and you're going to be arrested today unless you, you know, send us some money or go get e card, you know, uh, whatever these cards are, where you go prepaid cards, you know, and and whatever. And there's some YouTube videos on here where they they actually get, you know, got a police officer, you know, and so I think one was a female. I didn't listen. I didn't watch any of these, but I think they'd probably be good and illustrative of the point I'm trying to make. But anyway, let's. Trump has signed this robocall bill into. See, did I explain? I think I explained what robocalls are. Let's go here. Nope, let's go. Nope, that's not it. That's not it. This must. This better be it. Did I kill it? No. Okay. Here, I'll put the link for this for sure. Uh, if you answer the phone and you hear a recorded message instead of a live person, it's a robocall. If you're getting a lot of robocalls trying to sell you something, odds are the calls are illegal. Many are also probable scams. And then so you, I'm, I'll put the link to this and you can, I'm not going to read all this to you, but are robocalls legal? Why do I get so many? How do I know if it's a scam? And uh, let's see. What kind of robocalls are allowed without my permission? And that's messages that are purely informational. Robocalls about your flight being canceled, reminding you about an appointment, or letting you know about a delayed school opening fall into category as long as the caller doesn't try to sell you something. Uh, debt collection calls are actually allowed. And I think that has something to do with the fact that if you 
sign for a credit card or whatever, I think, in the which I never read. <laughs> you know, all the, all the crap that you have to go through, which, you know, when you if you buy software, if you do anything, you know, oh, you have to read these, you know. I, I about, I think, the living in a real night, I don't, it's not a real night, I mean, I, I don't want to make you think, you know, I'm living on a minimum, I'm living on Social Security. But it's a nice apartment complex here. The people are real nice, and it's the same, you know, couple of women that have been working here, you know, for years, and they're really nice. It's really nice, uh, except they keep raising the rent every, you know, every time, every year when I, when I and everybody else does a, uh, I mean, it's not their fault, you know, they're, they don't own the place, but uh, they're really nice, but, well, now I can do the lease online. I don't have to go down to the office and sit there with them and go through and sign it in 15 different places and uh, initial in 20 places or whatever. Now I can do it online with a, you know. But uh, before that, I'd be down there and I'd say, you know, I'd say, you know, I don't read this. And it was like, what? I said, I don't, I don't read this. You know, I don't want to sit here and read this stuff because they have everything in. I mean, it's everything in there. And I guess maybe the first time I read it, but after, and of course they make changes to it. But, you know, but so anyway, I so these debt collection calls are allowed because I'm sure you signed someplace saying yes, if since you're uh, loaning me money or doing such and such, political calls are allowed, and calls from healthcare providers like your pharmacy are reminding you. And messages from charities, uh, et cetera, so. But anyway, so I seriously d doubt that I, I have no faith that this is going to work at all because the other side is uh, the corporate interest, the moneyed interest, the all that. They are going to to somehow screw you. Actually, what I did, finally, because I have a company or whatever, and I've told them, like, they would, I think they are, I think they're the uh, ones about the car thing. I don't have a car. And they called every day. And I did, you know, and I, finally, you know, what you're not supposed to do, I, I got him online, you know, I actually picked up the phone or pressed a button or whatever, and then I said, you know, I don't have a car, and you've called, and you called yesterday or whatever, and I don't have a car. Oh, okay, I'll take you off the list. I said, fine. The next day they call, and I say, you know, you know, you uh, called yesterday. You said you'd take me off the call list. Oh, okay. Finally, you know, somebody just actually, you know, they just hung up on me, you know. I said, you know. And I think they're still calling. And one of the, and I don't know which one it is, they have their machine apparently set to call about 10 a.m. And it calls with a number that has an area code for Texas or for even Fort Worth, you know, and then it's a made-up number. Or, I mean, the machine generates a new number every time. So you can't block it. I mean, you know, you can try to block it. And I did block it, block it, block it, block it. I thought maybe eventually they re you No, they have, you know, unlimited. That doesn't, you know, that doesn't do any good. Um, oh, anyway, this this one calls. This is the reason I, I put an app on here. They call every morning about 10 o'clock in the morning, and they call twice. The machine calls with a number that's supposed to look like, oh, this might be this might be your uh, daughter calling. You know, it's not her number, but it is a, you know, a, a area code, a lo local or whatever. Or, you know, it could be some type of emergency or something, you know. And it, so they, well, anyway, they call once, right? At, you know, I don't, I didn't answer, I don't, I no longer, you know. So they call. 
And then immediately after that, they have their machine set to call again immediately with a different number. Around 2 o'clock in the afternoon, they call the same thing. Immediately call. I don't answer the phone. They immediately call back again. So actually what I did, um, went to, I use an Android phone. I went to the Play Store. Actually, I think I did a search on uh, YouTube. And if I can come up with the, uh, anyway, I did a search on YouTube. And it is, uh, uh, I think it's this, Clever Dialer. And uh, they, uh, it's ten dollars for a year, and you have all types of options. You know, you they there's all types of options they have. Um, one of the options is you can just block numbers, but that doesn't work. <laughs> Uh, not with these robo calls. Uh, also, you can use their they they get numbers that are robo calls, but of course they can't get them if they're just you know these random generated numbers or whatever. But they can and you can use their list or whatever. But actually, what I what I did is I just set it so if you're not on my list of family friends pharmacy, doctor, or whatever. If you're not on my list, contact list, the phone doesn't ring. Uh, I'm not even sure what kind of... Uh, it doesn't ring for me. I'm and I, uh, I don't know what kind of a message they... If they get a message, like... Uh, I don't know. Don't care. But uh, since I spent the $10 for it, Actually, you don't have to spend the $10, but for, you get $10. You pay for a year $10, and you get some extra benefits. Um, but my phone doesn't ring anymore, except if a family member or the pharmacy calls to tell me I have a prescription ready or something. And so that aggravation and all that. But I went through that aggravation for weeks or months, actually. I just put up with it, and now I don't have to put up with it. But you know what? I still, I'm not in favor of the death penalty, except for the robocall people. I just think that uh, we should execute them. I probably have some other people that I'm, you know, although I'm a bleeding heart liberal, opposed to the death penalty for numerous reasons i won't go into that i think i've talked about it in the past you know but uh anyway here in the united states and i think i have a feeling that in other countries oh there is yeah wikipedia here i think i don't think other countries because of the way our system is here you know to uh screw the little guy screw the worker uh, you know but protect the people that have money or people that make a donation to, you know, a, your political campaign or whatever. Uh, let's see, Canada. Uh, United States, California. Okay. I'll put a link to this. I'm not going to read the whole... But I have a feeling in other countries, I don't think that they that you all have to put up with the unbelievable crap that we have to put up with here. And finally, a law, I'm, I, but, you know, see, it's up to an agency and political candidates and presidents and whatever will, uh, especially like President Trump has uh, refused to fill spots on agencies, uh, has cut funding for agencies, has, uh, like for environmental, for the weather department and things like that, 
where normally you would have some of these people going in attending a, a conference or taking their proposals for what to do about certain things, the climate change and all this kind of stuff. And he, as a president, he says, you know, no. And the, I think, I'm not sure if he's also said you can't say, but I know the gov Republican governor of Florida has ordered uh, that the people in, <laughs> in Florida in the government uh, cannot use, uh, are forbidden to use in community, federal or in their state things can't use what uh, weather change or something. Was it, what would it be? What was the word? I can't remember, but so, you know, there's a problem that, you know, that we have here in the United States, which I'm thinking that probably in the rest of a civilized world, uh, you all probably don't have. So if you're thinking of coming to the United States, uh, the United States, by the way, is not number one. Uh, well, we're number one, I think, in gun deaths. Uh, we're number one in the amount of money we spend on military weapons and nuclear bombs and stuff like that, but we're not number one in health care or number one in uh, other, you know, other things. So anyway, that's, my God, if I talked much longer, it would be 2020. Anyway, I hope we all have a much better 2020, and I'd like to see us somehow correct the problems that we have without tearing each other apart. And I can't imagine now what it, you know, like back when I worked at that small hospital and I was the only liberal and came and they were waiting for me, uh, they'd be upset with me a little bit because they'd, before I'd got there, they'd say, okay, when Jim gets here, we're, we're going to ask him about, you know, the caucus and his, uh, membership in the American Civil Liberties Union, or we're going to ask him about that R Rodney King rioting out in California or whatever, and then I would come in and they'd say, what do you think about this? They'd be waiting for me. Then I'd say, and then they'd, then they'd go crazy a little bit, but then, you know, a little bit later, you know, we'd ordered in pizza together. We're having pizza. I would bring in I would go to sometimes drive across the highway and buy a large jar of pickles. And uh, uh, sometimes I would drive across the highway at five in the morning and with my own money purchase, you know, uh, breakfast and bring it over for, you know, the doctor and the two nurses and myself. And if somebody else was you know, respiratory, you know, stuff like that. And then, you know, uh, some of the nurses, they, I liked chocolate pie and uh, I liked angel food cake with a chocolate, you know, they would, Jim, what do you want? Chocolate pie, you know, and they would bring that in and a uh, nurse uh, for my birth, you know, for my birthday and for uh, Christmas or whatever, I got a, sh a shirt that uh, I very seldom wear it, but, you know, it was handmade by her for me, and she was one of those, she even, uh, a long time before, this nurse, Virginia, uh, she went over to Africa, and she went to South Africa, I think it was, or maybe it was Rhodesia, and anyway, she brought back a, uh, a flag, <laughs> uh, I'm not going to tell you what the, Flag. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you what the flag looked like, but uh, but anyway, I mean, a really nice lady. I think she had like I think she had seven children that she raised, you know, on her own. And ev all, I know all the boys. I think all of the all of them uh, on her. You know, she put them all through college, and they all you know went to college, graduated, and uh, had good jobs. Except then, there for the last, then it with uh, the Bush administration, th then things started going. You know, problem with uh, well, the problem I know with 
you know, we we were all family. You know, we were like all, we were like family. Uh, but one of the problems was, you know, her son, you know, was married. Of course, they all had kids too. They were anyway. The husband and the wife both worked for the same company that paid really good money, union jobs, you know. Uh, not many union jobs. Left. They both worked there, and they both made good money. And so they had a nice home. They had a boat, you know, had a couple cars and whatever. Well, the company had a layoff, you know, and both the husband and wife lost a job. So I know Virginia was really, I mean, that, that, that was, you know, advice from an old man. Well, I don't know anymore with uh, the economy and with everything. And I don't, even though it's a good company, uh, you know, diversity. You got a good job. You work for the XYZ widget company and they are a company that has a union and the employees are paid well and there's all these benefits maybe the other partner should even though that's a good you know maybe the other partner should work for uh, some other type not just a widget company but work for some you know so you have if something happens to the economy or whatever you have so anyway Word of advice from an old man. Uh, I'll put the links. Um, again, have a great 2020. That's not it. There it is.